Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> boys and girls. Uh, my name is Wilson DeCapo, Washington, and uh, today is Sunday inspiration, motivation. I'll be saying it different ways <laughs> so many times, but uh, it's approximately 7.15 a.m. It's October the 17th, it's Sunday. Uh, I will start to do that. I was, it was brought to my attention that uh, people hear certain things or they hear certain speeches or lectures or building or whatever you choose to call it. And I don't see the date or the time, I might not say the time all the time, but I will start saying the date so people can understand that, that, that a lot of times it's a feeling for me. I try to take myself out of the equation as much as possible and allow God to move in whatever direction he chooses to. Not saying that I can stop him if, if I wanted to, but you can definitely get in the way. So I try to stay out of the way by only doing things like this, whether it's for my firm, Youth Normality, or whether it's for the streets, or for my people, or for people I don't know, or questions, or whatever. I wait until I get that, that feeling, like, when you can't sit still almost. And usually I would do Sunday inspiration, motivation a lot later, but I woke up, I prayed, I did what I was supposed to do. And, you know, I probably shouldn't, but you know, I'm in the hospital. So I did my little workout because I, I come too far to go back to fat boy. <laughs> So, I probably should be working out with pneumonia, but I, I, I did a little something. Because now that I go to the gym, it's like uh, you, you almost fiend for working out, almost. Which is a good thing. It could be a whole lot of other stuff I could be addicted to, to working out. So, to God be the glory in that aspect. But... It was important for me to come today because I realized that the concept of, now I, I'm gonna be very clear when I say this, the, the concept of Sunday Inspiration Motivation was, be, was started because during the pandemic, I realized that there were people who could not go to church. All the mass jet. And they look towards the internet or Facebook or, you know, churches started uploading their channels and the E man started doing his cook by, uh, doing his Friday sermons on the internet. So I do Sunday inspiration and motivation for those people who can't get out their house, whether it's for work or whether it's for medical conditions. And I still try to exhibit or attack the yin and the yang in my own personal life. Therefore, in hopes that you find the very thing that you need in order to succeed in life successfully, which is basically just saying, if you want to be happy, I didn't say rich. Notice I didn't say rich. Notice I didn't say wealthy. Notice I didn't say married. Notice I didn't say single. I said, if you want to be successful in life, which equates to happiness. 
you must find this and contribute it to yourself. Because again, I'm in the hospital and uh, for some strange reason, every hospital I be in, I just, it just seems like people, <laughs> nothing. So, like I was saying, uh, this one thing that you must have in your life if you are choosing or want to be successful, which equates to happiness, is balance. For my Mukni Moon, for my Muslim brothers and sisters, you have to find ways to counteract your energy head and for the christians that may be listening i'm not talking about going blowing anything up or nothing crazy in actuality the word you had in the content is actually described as war with one's good and evil in one's self not someone else's jihad means to go through war inside of yourself against the good part of you and the bad part of you the best way to counteract these things is to understand that violence means that I accept the fact that there are some things wrong with me and I accept that there are some things I need to fix but I also accept that there are some things that are good to me or for me and some things that I have already worked on and completed and if you figure out your you can say it with me if you home your Violence, not our, not mine. If you figure out a way to make your balance balanced, then you will find happiness. Uh, when I, my professor at Cal Berkeley used to always say to me, well, 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 when I used to ask him questions, because I was one of them people I was asking questions, he'd get annoyed by it. And he used to say, why don't you go make a couple mistakes? And then come back and talk to me. And I used to think he was being an a-hole, you know what I mean? Like, who is this dude encouraging me to go make mistakes? But in actuality, he was trying to tell me that the things that I was asking him could only be answered by trial and error that I participated in in my own life. If you're trying to figure out what course this was, it was psychology. And, uh, I used to ask him questions and always would lie, which I think he got on to. And I would say, you know, I got a friend who, you know, I'm in this course, and, but I really was talking about myself. And he used to always, like, call me on my, you know, this Sunday motivation. I'm not going to cuss because I, I want this to be heard and I don't want the cuss words to be he. Like, oh, he's a fraud or a hypocrite. No. I'm not. He would always catch me and say, why don't you go make a couple of mistakes? And at the time, I didn't understand what he meant. But what he basically was saying to me was that you can't go to a person and ask a person to give you the recipe to your balance. There are some things that you might do a person might not like. 
I really wasn't an avid weed smoker. Yes, I said it. <laughs> I know people like, he's saying that? And more like, yes, I know a lot of y'all been saved and took y'all shahada since y'all was babies. And Jesus brought y'all down to the earth by himself. I know y'all been saved, sanctified in your whole life and all of that. And I'm not talking to y'all. Like I said, I, you know, I wasn't an avid weed smoker, but I dated a couple of them. You know, they would wake up in the morning. As soon as they get up, take that half a blunt they got from last night, smoke that joint right on their day. Singing, vacuuming. <laughs> so who am I to say, hey, that they shouldn't smoke when they first woke up? If they seem happy to me. What I'm basically saying is there is a whole bunch of stuff that you do in your life. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you may participate in. You might catch the couple rapping about selling drugs or, and hustling. And then the next moment you might see me on Youth Normality or hear me on Youth Normality telling the youth they shouldn't do it. Not understanding that this is my yin and yang. Just because I talk about something in the present does not mean that it exists in the present. Half of your favorite rappers talk about selling bricks, never sold no bricks. And if they did, they sure enough ain't selling bricks now if they get paid $40,000 a show. They're talking in retrospect. So... Getting back on topic, when you realize that people, now, now I want y'all to really listen to this one. Might want to get a pencil of paper for this, so I want you to really listen to this one. When you realize that people like the idea of you, what are not mature enough to like the reality of you, a lot of your questions will be answered. I'll say that again. When you realize that people like the idea of you, but don't have the maturity to recognize the reality of you. What's the difference between an idea and reality? What's some examples that's clear today? Not complicated, they lame in terms. It's like we were not gonna get complicated today. We just talk about some straight, straightforward things. Let's speak about Eli Musk for us, James. Like we was in this viral uh group that I signed up for. And it was actually like something that one of my friends brought me into. Wealthy dude. He just wanted to change my perspective on how I looked at things. And Eli Musk said that at the time, I, I, I don't feel, a, I feel like when I lie to you, I give you my power. So I'm not going to lie and say I knew who he was because I didn't have an idea who he was. I didn't. I know who he is now. Everyone does. I had no idea who he was. Some funny looking white dude had a lot of money. That's all I know. I'm like, okay, cool. He said, if you say to yourself, it takes 30 days to build your house, it will take 30 days. He said, if you say to yourself, it'll take three days to build your house, it'll take three days. Now, I know that it don't sound like anything to a lot of people. Like, mm-hmm. I was waiting for something deep, but it is. It is. It's extremely deep. If I wash clothes and I got the clothes sitting in the corner and I say, I'm going to fold them tomorrow. I could have folded them right then and there. Gotten it over with. But I say, nope. I show coming on. I'm fold them tomorrow. I just came from lunch. I'm tired anyway. Tomorrow come, you, you say, hey, something else come up. 
You say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like, this is way more important than folding my clothes. Up. And then the next thing you know, it might be a whole week that went past and you didn't went or walk past that opportunity to take care of that right then and there. So when a week passes and you look at that bag like, oh my God, I had this bag of clothes over there and I didn't fold them for a whole week. That really isn't anyone else's fault. That's what I mean. The concept that things happen outside of your control is oblivious to me. So, the parable becomes the same with your life and the people around your life and the people who you consider to be your companions or your boyfriends or your husbands or, or, or the people who you might consider to be candidates for these things. You have to realize that there are some people who like the idea of you. And what's the idea? The idea is we want to go to Mars one day. The reality of it is we don't have the technology to do it. Humans on Mars is sexy. It's, 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 it's sci-fi. It's, it's movie-like. The reality is we can't. So there's some people who are in love with the idea of you. Oh, man, you should see my baby. Mm hmm. Hair hers. Yeah, that body. Is some, oh, my God. Whew, that body crazy, man. That, man I'm telling you, I didn't hit the lottery on this one. But the reality of it is, yes, she got a body. Yes, she's pretty. She got her own hair. She got her own job. She got her own stuff. But are you ready for the reality of her? Are you ready to deal with her when her period come on? When she's angry? She's frustrated. She want to go to Miami every month. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yep. Just who I've been waiting for. My kids like him, girl. <laughs> My family like him, girl. I like him. Everything. Have you dealt with the reality that you might have some challenges with this guy. He might be in a phase of changing his life. He might be a square, and you used to niggas in the street. Like, these are the things that we don't, we don't think about. What we wonder, why we find ourselves in these situations over and over and over and over and over again. We find ourselves in these situations over and over and over and over again. It ain't you. It ain't them. Is that you haven't figured out balance. If your man just came home from jail, there's going to be some times you're going to have to help him. If your woman just lost her job due to corona, that's going to be some times you have to pay all the bills, dude. How you doing? doing? All right. You can put it right there. Uh, want to do it like this and you'll take it from there? Yeah. Okay, thank you, sure? Ms. Andrew. Okay. All right, thank you. Oh. So when you find yourself 
in those situations. Like, this is the reality that we live in now. Are, are you just cool with her? Because, you know, she, she worked for the city and she got benefits and this, that, and third. You got your job and, and she ain't no broke chick and all this other stuff. What about if your woman get in trouble? <sighs> now you have to deal with the reality of a woman. I don't care how manly she act. I don't care about none of that. Now you got to deal with the reality that now that this woman is calling you her man, she's going to lean on you because that is the way it's supposed to be. But you ain't think about that reality. You thought about the idea of having a woman that had all her stuff together and everything together. And one thing the pandemic told us, is that it ain't got to be her fault. Corporations laying people off just because. So the idea of this woman will not always equate the reality of this woman. The idea of this man might not always equate to the reality of this man. But the, you know, that's the sad news. Let's talk about some good news. So we can wrap it up. The benefit to having violence is you get to reciprocate. You get to receive a earned reward. I'll say that again. When you have that balance, you get to walk into your blessings with your head held high and you won't be thinking to yourself, I don't deserve this. Instead of running from your man, you would call your dude up, you or your man or your boyfriend, your husband, and say, baby, you know what? These people have laid me off. And you get to hear that response. Baby, don't worry about it. I got you. Girl, you'll find something else. They the ones that lost you. They, you ain't lose. They lost a good worker. Man, you get to hear. You get to feel. You get to see the reality, not the idea. Of the woman that you're with. I know you just came home. Don't worry about it. You know. I knew what was going on. I knew what I will get myself into. We're going to fill out these apps. We're going to fill out this resume. We're going to fill out these applications. We're going to. just. I just want you to breathe. Settle in. Relax. I got you. See, that's the reality, not the idea. The balance of it all. Because without that, you'll find yourself running to an un- designated spot that has not been proven and leaving something that has been proven multiple times. <laughs> I'll say that again. You ain't careful. And you start paying attention to ideas and not reality. You'll meet a girl, start talking to her. She seemed like she got a whole world together and everything. And now your baby ain't got no job because COVID and made her job fire everybody. And now you say, ho, oh, this ain't working no more. Let me go over here. And your girl done proved herself to you numerous times, 10 times, 5 times, 16 times. And you don't even know this woman proved, she ain't even proved herself once. But you take that idea 
not the reality. You take that idea, you run your behind over there, and you leave your girl that, that been holding you down all this time for some chick. In the first week that you with this chick, she start talking about stuff that should be obvious. Like when you gonna get a job? Could you afford stuff that I want? Your old chick wasn't talking like that. See, but you thought it was something better because you're paying attention to ideas. Or, or you get that man and that dude that been messing with you at your job, he started looking real good now. He buy you lunch every day. He, he start looking real good. And you forget that that man went to the, went to jail for taking care of y'all. Yeah. You you might not have been a drug dealer or whatever he was doing, but you was benefiting from it. And now you say, oh, no, now I, I just want to square. This jail stuff ain't for me, none of this. And it could be the other way around. We can spin this story any way you want to. Bottom line is, you go mess with dude at the job. Then y'all having that conversation one day, he say, you know, this was fun. Like, you, you had somebody, I had somebody. Like, I'm not leaving my wife. And now this dude that got this ambition and his stuff going for himself, he leave, get his stuff together, and you see the blessing you could have been in. You already know you had a good man. Now he got his stuff together too? Oh, man. Listen. That was supposed to be your reality. But you chose an idea. I'm not encouraging people in closing to be flamboyant in sin, whether Christian or Islam. I'm not encouraging you to go against your God's rules. I'm just encouraging you to understand that there will be balance in your life, whether you want to want it to be or not. Please do not fall for the idea that once I get my life together and get God in my life that I'ma stop sinning. Get, please get that idea out your mind. Please stop listening to these people saying that they they life is together. They don't sin. They don't do it. Please stop listening to these people. The reality of it is, is that whatever religion, which basically just means way of life that you are in, is only there so when you do mess up, you have a tool to rebuild yourself. <laughs> That's the reality. This discipline, which all religion is, is discipline. This discipline was set forth and put here so when you did bump your head, you had a bandage to put on. Inshallah, I pray that you got something out of this. And if you did get something out of this, to God be the glory, I had nothing to do with it. I just allow him to use me in the manner in which he chose. If you are a Christian and you are sitting somewhere and you can't make it to church because of health reasons or financial reasons, I pray that God sends something, whether it's a person or a job or a doctor. He, God knows best. I pray that he sends whatever is going to or supposed to fix your problem. 
so that you can do what you and meet him at the place you feel familiar with. I mean, never be afraid to pray for people. It's a hadith that states that if you pray for your brother and you do it sincerely, not only will Allah give him what you prayed for him for, but he also will give it to you and you did not even ask for it. Inshallah, may Allah for you and I take it away. So, it's your boy DeCapo. Like always, keep your head up. To God be the glory without having nothing. DeCapo won.